From Carneseca Arena in Queens, it's Friday night Big East women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The 14th ranked DePaul Blue Demons in first place in the conference pay a visit to the St. John's Red Storm. We've got a crucial matchup right in the thick of conference play, everybody, as we take a look at the Big East standings. DePaul, they've got that comfortable lead at the top, and then there's a level of unknown in the middle of the Big East. A win tonight for St. John's would be huge for where they stand and in the NCAA tournament conversation. As we welcome you courtside, everybody, I'm John Fanta, joined by my partner, Mike Watts. We will join the third member of our team, Ashley Lyotis, in a few moments. These are the top two scoring teams in the Big East, and when they met back on January 12th, it was a one-and-gun down-to-the-wire affair. Just a five-point decision. So what decides the rematch? I think we'll see something pretty similar today. In years past, St. John's has tried to slow DePaul down. Now I think they're willing to run in a track meet a little bit more. The number that stood out in that matchup, only 10 turnovers by St. John's, only six points off turnovers for DePaul. DePaul's a team that could rack up 40 points off turnovers in a game, so that's what I'm watching. The guard play is strong in this matchup. We have two of the top 25 players in women's college basketball and assists this season, starting with St. John's Tiana England. And the way she's doing it this year, the numbers are drastically different, but it's more off the ball movement. There's more positionless basketball for St. John's this year because more players can actually handle it and more of them can shoot than in years past. So England is being tasked with a new role, but one that she's handled quite well. For Doug Bruno's Blue Demons, nobody was better in the Big East Conference last week than Kelly Campbell. Yeah, Kelly's got something to prove. Already has a double-double uh, in, in past games, a triple-double last time out. Talking about someone who is a spectacular leader, but she had a triple-double two years ago against Seton Hall, one assist shy against St. John's. It's today the day where we see for the first time back-to-back -back triple doubles in the Big East. Campbell, a New Jersey native for the senior. This is a homecoming weekend with the Johnnies and Seton Hall ahead. We'll join Ashley Lyotis after this, as well as at the lineups and the tip-off. Big East action between DePaul and St. John's is ahead. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Each of these teams had faced their own type of adversity this season. Starting with DePaul, they lost at home against Creighton last weekend. That was a major upset. Now I asked head coach Bruno about facing adversity and how he is able to coach that when they don't lose that often. He said facing adversity comes in all shapes and sizes. They deal with it every day at practice. DePaul in the road blues. The 26th meeting between these two teams. DePaul has owned the series 20 to 5. KB off the catch and is taken away. DePaul forcing over 22 turnovers per game. <laughs> Shante Stonewall, the reigning Big East tournament most outstanding player against the Blue Demons rolling. And I think the story of this game might have just been told on this possession. No pressure in the backcourt. I don't think DePaul is scared to press. But if you think the past years, the Hanford Grant Lewis trifecta that St. John's had, they didn't press much. They didn't press at all in the first meeting in the backcourt early on, will they now? England short. Here comes Sonia Morris. Ahead to Deja Church, the Michigan transfer, and DePaul off and running. Gotta stop penetration on the fast break. Absolutely critical for St. John's. If you let them get an unimpeded 80 feet, 
you're going to get blown out tonight. Alston with the teardrop. The Ole Miss transfer is given in the first. I'm glad he said teardrop. Nickname, Drip. That was a good drip. <laughs> Coming in hot on a Friday night. Stonewall is off. Now, this St. John's team, Mike, you think about the program, Joe Tartamella has been known for a defensive pedigree. This team's averaging 74 points per game. They can score the basketball. There have been years where they had to do that, but they don't have to do that now. The defensive principles are still there. It is extraordinarily difficult to score on St. John's in the half court, and that's where DePaul offensively has struggled of late. So in that sense, you like St. John's and elements of this matchup. It's the 35% in the open floor that's the question. You see DePaul gets the rebound off the miss, and they've got an outlet pass right away. And Joe Tarnamello is waving the team back. Get back as fast as you can and turn it into a half-court, quarter-court scenario. Morris, short. Here's Tiana England. A 20-plus point performance at Georgetown with 10 rebounds of travel. Called here are officials tonight, Ed Selaski, Alani Spurlock, and Kevin Peptel. We appreciate our officials. They came over, made sure they didn't start before we were ready. That was uh, much appreciated. They're in March mode. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Stonewall off the catch. Off on the three, but an extra opportunity for Church and the Demons. Held for three. Knocks it down, and DePaul averages 11 of those per game. And at 35%, it's an efficient number of threes a game as well. Blue Demons are in the top 10 in the NCAA in a slew of categories. 85 points per game, 11 threes per game. They average 20 dishes, 20 assists per affair as Austin travels. And I'm not done yet. <laughs> 271 steals. That's fourth in women's college basketball. Yeah, it, it's the Paul ball. You are looking at me like you're in utter shock, but are you really? <laughs> no, because when you've gone to 17 straight NCAA tournaments, you have to have a formula that's consistent. It's been consistent for quite some time. Doug Bruno's been at this for nearly three and a half decades. One of 12 finalists for the Basketball Hall of Fame. Stonewall, Morris, travel. I don't think she did. Her left foot never left the floor. But it's been tit for tat a little bit so far with these. Uh, the England travel a couple of possessions ago I didn't, I didn't really appreciate. But the Alston one was a no-doubter, so that's how this game's going to go. I always knew your middle name was Pereira. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sterator. <laughs> Who has been a Big East official. Correct. For a long time. People don't know. That guy works as hard as almost anybody. Your thoughts everywhere. on him in the booth? Good. My voice went up. That, that makes you think I'm, I'm <laughs> covering something up, but good. Yeah, right. Hoppy knocks it down. And Now Hoppy with the hand. It'll stay with the Blue Demons. Hadasha Hoppy is the player Joe Tartamella says has embodied that hard work ethic. She sets the tone. In the offseason, did everything the coaching staff asked her to do. Now she's averaging 17 points per game in conference play. Called it critical how fit she was coming into the season. Church, no, a third chance at it. And it'll stay with the Blue Demons. Joe Tartamella might lose his mind. It's been rebounding that has really driven him crazy over these past few games in the Big East. I mean, they've won four or five, but the one they lost, the overtime game to Villanova, they felt like they were a layup and a couple rebounds away from ending that in regulation. And some of the losses they've had along the way, you can directly point to that one problem and say, that's why this hasn't worked out. By the way, you just saw him knock a water bottle inadvertently out of Correa's hand. Immediately laughed with her and handed it back to her. That was... <laughs> Joey T in the flesh. 
England off to Bailey, but rejected by Church. 0.4 blocks a game. That's about all we're going to see, folks. Morris hesitation. What a pretty sequence. Morris may be the most improved Blue Demon, and those are big, big words from Doug Bruno. The numbers this year coming off for freshman year, fairly remarkable. 21 last time against Providence. Lost 26 pounds over the summer. And a whistle and a foul on the floor on the Blue Demons. I got to know what her diet is. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> We'll find out. I guarantee you it's not the one that Mike Golick uses. Or the one we use. <laughs> we are only five minutes to change in, so if you enjoyed this, you've got a full night of it. Whether you like it or not, the Paul's up five at the break. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Not gonna want to miss this. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with the big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Ashley? You know, Joe Tartamel made sure to tell us, we want to win the games. You know, like the, the way you know, it was posed to him from us on the call, you know, it, it's that will to win, and you hear that a lot from coaches. Well, no, we want to win. Trust me. <laughs> well, DePaul has controlled the series through the years. He called it annoyingly so, how much they've won against St. John's. Well, they've won against pretty much everybody. Since the Big East reconfigured in 2013, DePaul is 116 and 20 against conference foes. It's the best of any Big East men's or women's program, right, since realignment? A little bit better than those Villanova Wildcats. Which one? The men. The men. 
Here's Happy off to England. The handoff to Alston with 12 on the shot clock. And a zone from DePaul. England on the drive. Seven on the shot clock. Bailey wide open. St. John said they need to be chameleons against whatever DePaul brings defensively. Shante Stonewall's brought it offensively. Five points. Par for the course. WNBA future, no doubt about that. And DePaul off to a two for four start from beyond the arc. Stonewall, a senior with Campbell. Doug Bruno says they just set the tone for the rest of the team as Alston answers. 45% from three this year for Alston. Could you imagine that number for a St. John's player three years ago? My gosh. That's been the Achilles heel for St. John's. If you start to hit the three ball, they've just withered. But this season, they've got the threats to get it done. It's actually been a lot of time spent in practice on defense. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a pretty inexperienced team. I mean, you've got England, but you've got players like Alston hitting threes like this. Yeah, registered senior, but comes from Ole Miss, new to the program. A lot of the time you see two freshmen, a sophomore, two juniors on the floor. A turnover. Hoppy playing the fast break game, and that was pretty. Correa, the freshman, too. Who said St. John's can't run in a track meet with DePaul? A Correa was great in the first meeting, a second straight turnover forced this time by Hoppy. Hoppy just slashing across. And will knock that off the knees of Morris. Chance for St. John's to maybe grab a, a lead here. St. John's led early in the fourth quarter in Chicago in these two teams' first meeting as Alston travels this time. But Correa making her first career start in that game had 16 points, eight rebounds, Joe Tartamella was so pleased with the freshman's production. And it's telling that you're able to let her come off the bench in 20 of her 21 games. I mean, it's telling that you have that kind of scoring depth. Usually you can't leave a player that's your second leading scorer on the bench, but it's a big luxury. Church with the rebound, Morris in and out. Correa grabs this one. Oh, what a move by Church to get the swipe. Fun first quarter. Two point game here in Queens. Stonewall guarded by Correa. Settling the tempo was something St. John's did in that first meeting in Chicago. And Doug Bruno referenced it to us earlier this week on a call saying, when we get into a slower tempo right now, we're unsettled ourselves. By the way, DePaul goes back to a man-to-man, -man, so I'm interested to see how they continue to progress there. I mean, it's interesting, because your identity as a national brand, as a Big East brand, is we're going to run you to death there's some movement there. I think that's a fair call, blocking foul. But how you how you assimilate in the half court is, you know, two thirds of the game. He made that quite clear to us. Church rejected at the rim. What a block by Bailey. Hoppy, St. John's lead. Hoppy's been doing most of the defense in this game. Also now has most of the offense. Eight points already for St. John's. A former Big East freshman of the year. A near turnover. Church is out of bounds. Back to the Red Storm. I'm just glad that the Bailey's okay. This is a difficult, difficult drop. But I mean, you're getting your hand up above the rim to get a piece of that. That is extraordinary. Big time rejection by the sophomore. 
St. John's on an eight nothing run. Here's Drake, the freshman. Only averages five minutes per game, but getting relied upon here with eight on the shot clock. Alston for the three. Short. DePaul can hold for the final shot. Held off the crossover. Off. Five seconds left. Bailey had that great defensive play. Now with the dish, Drake. And that'll do it for the opening and quarter. The first quarter this great quarter. run by St. John's. 8-0 to close the quarter. And uh, I think the, the comments you made over the, the last week on TV are right. DePaul a little unsettled in the half court. It showed. The St. John's Red Storm in need of a resume win. No opportunity like the present. We've played 10, a one point game in Queens. Your chance to we are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with the big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Winter. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Great voices ready to start. It's a one point game between St. John's and number 14 DePaul. Blue Demons breaking out to a 14 to 7 lead, but then the Red Storm turned it on with an 8 0 run. Yeah, and Kadasha Hoppy, a big part of that, able to hit a three there from the left hand side. Finishes eight points in that opening quarter. Defense to offense in transition, little give and go action. The return from Hoppy. And then the rejection. I mean, Kadesha Bailey getting up by the rim to swat that thing away. Impressive 8 0 run for St. John's to end the opening quarter, including this hoppy three in the final minute. And holding DePaul to just 5 for 19 from the field. But they didn't get 19 shots off, so <laughs> they're doing a lot right. We've got a clock error to open up the second quarter. There's 9.58 on the game clock, 29 on the shot clock. That's... that's Something's wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, and a lot of the time, the, the shot clock and the game clock work a, a little bit differently. I know that's that's crazy, but the way the, the point five, point one, whatever works, I, I've been around enough tables, but... Yeah, you also went to Fordham, and there's a lot more math being done over at that <laughs> campus than there is where I went to school. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't, don't dog seat in the hall. What are you doing? <laughs> 
I only had to take one math class to get my degree. Me too, but those are AP <laughs> credits. By the way, St. John's six turnovers in that opening quarter. That's right in line with what DePaul forces on average. St. John's only turned the ball over 10 times the first time these teams met. Lowest number this year by an opponent of DePaul. Pull up three is off. But look at them fan out. They know where to create open space in full court. That's what's so impressive about DePaul. It's not single-minded. There is a plan. Keep it Kelja. The first reserve off the bench, checking in for the Blue Demons with that three-point attempt as Correa hits that 15-foot. A rejection by Bailey. A block party for Kadeja, and then a foul in transition. It was Held who tripped up Alston. Bailey has less than 15 blocks on the season. Two big highlight blocks. I mean, that is all palm on all ball. Wow. She has that length at, at six feet tall, ha has those long extremities, and not necessarily a player, John, where you're expecting crazy highlight reel blocks on a regular basis, but when she gets moving and able to elevate, yeah, sure can. Here's all you need to know about the defensive intensity of St. John's thus far. Kadeja Bailey had two blocks in 11 Big East games combined. <laughs> She's got two in the first 11 minutes tonight. Oh. Alston, tough runner, and she banks it in. Phenomenal start overall for St. John's and DePaul. Struggling to answer. These are the adverse moments that Ashley talked about at the outset of this broadcast. Morris is way off. It'll go back to St. John's. Hoppy and Alston combining for 15 points. Hoppy you expect, although she came off a bad game last time out. Seven points on two of 12 from the floor against Georgetown. Alston's averaging 12 points a game, but to bring it this early on is a nice plus. What's interesting about this DePaul team they were in a battle with Providence this past Sunday at home, a five-point game late in the third quarter. Now, they pulled away one comfortably. Seven on the timer for Alston, who's short on this three. But Providence, until they started to turn the basketball over, was very much in the game, which was an indicator that maybe the Blue Demons aren't at their absolute best at the moment. Yeah, and they won those games over the course of the first half of the year. Of course, you see the, the nine teams, they see him again. But you talk to Doug Bruno, he says, I think we could have lost eight of those games. They started 9-0 and in the conference, swept the opening half of the year. Those are big words. And some of them, uh, maybe that's a, a bit loose to say we could have lost them. Morris hits that, Jay. But, you know, outside of one or two games, you felt like they were, they were battles. They had to work. It, it wasn't handed to them. DePaul so well tested in their non-conference. The only two losses in out of league play to Connecticut and Oregon State. <laughs> Oregon State coming all the way out in Corvallis, Connecticut. They trailed by over 20, got it to single digits. No real shame in that. No, in neither of those losses. There's no problem with that. And the loss to Creighton, you were up by 20. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's an embarrassing way to lose, but uh, the three losses they have are, are, are fine. They happen. And for Creighton, that's a team with a top 30 RPI. Yep. So it's not like it's a killer, and that's why the Blue Demons were number 14 in the NCAA top 16 reveal as yes. Katie finishes. And I, I think they're well aware that they aren't, they aren't counting their chickens yet. They're not, okay, 14, that means we're the... <laughs> You know, number two ranked four seed, so we might get uh, these home games, and they aren't there yet. They want two home games, everything after that, they, they'll see what happens. Sonia Morris up to eight points. Impressive. And they felt like the minute she got last year, about 15 a game, were critical in helping her take the step forward this year. Ten on the shot clock. St. John shooting 43% on the night. That one just short for Alston, but a long rebound to Bailey, who seemingly 
made the extra play tonight. A couple of blocks and five rebounds. Bailey has the KB, who's dealt with a little bit of an injury over the course of this year, setting the screen, following the miss, tipping it out, making it difficult. And now the seniors foul. Got injured against James Madison, missed four games, but you talked to Joe Tartamello about Alicia Kaby, and he will talk ad nauseum about how important she is to, to their team. And it's not because she scores the most points or gets the most rebounds necessarily. It's that grit and toughness that she brings to the floor that's incredibly important. Alicia Kaby, a native of Philadelphia, played for one of the nation's best high school basketball programs, Newman Goretti. Mm -hmm. A combined record of 60 and one during her last two years. And now <laughs> another long rebound for the Red Storm for Correa, who's all air on that three. England with the pickoff. Fast pace, Hoppy, what a give. A fight for it on the baseline and Campbell comes out with it. Two on one, Stonewall takes it herself. Man, what a tempo to this game right now. Feel bad for the officials. It's a complicated relationship between you and them. <laughs> <laughs> Four point game. Seven on the shot clock for England. That shot a bit unsettled, but what a rebound for KB. Hoppy for three. Knocks it down. Time out to Talk about the importance of rebounding, how it can change the dynamic of a game. KB forcing an offensive rebound. Now this time around, that extra pass unsettled the ball. St. John's able to find the open player. Hoppy with the knockdown. St. John. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start. Great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work. But you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with the victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here. here. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get to... The St. John's Red Storm came to play against the 14th ranked DePaul Blue Demons. An 18-4 run for the Johnnies. What a swing over to Hoppy. This is pretty basketball. 
England trying to go from distance. Yeah, maybe you miss, but KB gets the board. It's that extra pass and the ability to create some second chance points. A big deal for St. John's. How does DePaul respond? Be a little more careful with the basketball in transition. I think that's part of it. They've turned the ball over five times, but they've all sort of been on the run and on the move. They've been blocked a couple times in transition as well. Off the hands of Katie. You know, DePaul's rebounding numbers aren't exactly jump off the page good either. They're slightly below average as Held flips that into the cup. And that's exactly what Joe Taramella does not want to see when his team builds a lead and DePaul gets points off turnovers. A chance to string something together here for the Blue Demons. Yeah, it's the story, isn't it? It's definitely the story. Seven points off seven. St. John's turnovers and off the miss. Three it's a three. Ball, Lexi, Held. Lexi Held starting to sizzle up to eight points. DePaul's not going to shoot 31% in the basketball game. So St. John's has, has held them down defensively, built a little bit of a lead. You can't really stop them. You just hope to contain them is what Joe Tartamello said. <laughs> and it's true. 85 points a game. If you hold a team 10 points below your average, you go, you go to the locker room and say, we did our job today. 75, that's a big ask for any team to come up with. In the first meeting, St. John's did hold DePaul down defensively just to 74 points. Yep, and that is a great day. <laughs> In still a losing effort, which just speaks to how good the Blue Demons are as three seconds is called on Church. Exactly. I mean, DePaul's a special team this year. I mean, number 14's not a joke. There's a reason they've been the benchmark for so long. It's a consistent style of play. It's, it's the caliber of athlete they bring in. And it's the head coach. Yep. He played at DePaul for Ray Meyer. Yep. He's talking about those Chicagoland uh, coaching connections he's made over the years. Talked to them this week. But notice, Raven Farley has not played. Unique Drake has. So it's for St. John's to play a little bit smaller to match up. Church filed, heading to the free throw line for a pair to try to tie this game. Bailey is your biggest player on the floor for St. John's. And you're talking about a six foot kind of swing player. St. John's Almost John's handles the ball at times like a guard, or can. That's what DePaul does to you. Deja Church coming over from Michigan, 82% free throw shooter in league play. And Doug Bruno said, she gives us a physical presence. Mm -hmm. Not scratching the surface of what she can bring yet. Feels like she should be a double-double machine. Said can be a nightly double-double if she rebounds the way that she thinks uh, that she can and that he thinks she can. Just like that, what was an 18-4 run to find some separation, it's a one-point game. And a near turnover. All right, the press has arrived from DePaul. They're going to put a little bit of pressure on. Only beat the 10-second call by about a second and a half. Alston from way downtown. Hey, Alyssa Alston, 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 up to 10 Alston, points. Alston. 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 Here's Hoppy. Pull up. Oh, they're sizzling tonight. He wins. That's a taste of DePaul's own medicine. Stonewall answers. What an answer it was. That is enormous for DePaul. Didn't, didn't wait, didn't spend 20 seconds trying to catch their breath. But the three-point shooting from St. John's right now making it very difficult for DePaul to get a rhythm. Hoppy has four threes. What a first half. Campbell, kick out, Stonewall in rhythm. Just short and a foul going for the rebound. Church with the effort, Alston called for it. What a turnaround here by Hoppy, game over game. I mean, not a good game last time out against Georgetown. One of nine 
from three point. Her worst performance of the year from beyond the arc and four of six today. It just continues. The three point shooting of St. John's can really change the game for them. Those makes are massive in terms of setting up your defense. Of course, the six points don't hurt either. They're averaging seven trifectas per game in Big East play already with six tonight. And now Bailey with a deflection. Oh, did she come to play tonight? Then the pass off to England, who scores it? What a play! England leading that charge. She doesn't need to be the only player that can run in the full court, and Bailey almost knocked off our broadcast table. That is effort. Church willed that one in. Just pushing our table back into place. <laughs> That's where our sturdiness. <laughs> It's the circle of life, partner. Yeah, the circle of saving my own life. If she had come diving in, that's all that could have protected us. The circle of Shaker Square Fast Food Row. Correct. <laughs> A couple of Clevelanders with you as Bailey scores it. You know, that didn't stop Doug Bruno from asking what kind of pizza we liked on the call this week. There was a reason why he asked us. Yeah. <laughs> Stonewall is short. St. John's can hold it here. What do you make of this first half? Outstanding, and you're talking about holding the pole. Now, again, they've played bad quarters against St. John's before. They've scored seven points in a quarter and still won the game. But the pole felt like they needed to have three or four good quarters today, not just two. Right now, it looks like they've only got a chance to get two. Bailey with five. Nolan, just short, and that'll do it for the first half. And that's the end of the first half. The score is St. John's. St. John slows down the number of turnovers, only two in that second quarter, and allows them to push that lead up. It was an 18-4 run. DePaul did respond. They pride themselves on how they handle adversity. They're going to go to the locker room. They aren't going to change a lot, and they're going to try and turn this thing around just by finding themselves a little bit in the second half. St. John's with an opportunity to make a big statement to the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. Projected in the latest bracketology, but right on that bubble. They are 20 minutes away from making a very strong statement. Up by seven at the half here in Queens. Much more to come on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go. out of this. I think you're in it. 
We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? So we got to make sure we... Some of the top Big East honorees, Kelly Campbell, with the triple-double on Sunday against Providence. She ties the program record at the ball with Jessica January, another great. And then there's Maddie Segris for Villanova, who's leading the Big East with 20 points per game as a freshman. Yeah, big deal for Maddie Segrist. And, you know, Villanova plays such a unique offensive style. Everyone talks about it, but for her to be able to score at that number with that style, and, of course, that overtime win against St. John's was a major leader in that. And Kelly Campbell, maybe not coming off with, with a triple-double potential for a second straight game today, but even though she hasn't scored, six crucial rebounds, couple assists as well. Looking at the Big East honor roll. Well... Alizé and Blockton and Tori Schickel were great Big East players, but they're no longer uh, around the Big East. I miss these days. I do. <laughs> I do too. But they were really, really good players. So we're doing this again. We're back, baby. Yep. So that, that's the weekly honor roll from, from this time last year. And Shanine Samuels, she's still at Seton Hall, the Pirates right now on FS2 against Marquette. Hi, everybody. John Fanta and Mike Watts. Now we're going to talk about the Big East Tournament, which comes to Wintrust Arena March 6th to the 9th in Chicago. And we could be seeing a preview of a matchup in the tournament, maybe a championship game. Absolutely. I mean, you come into this year, and I think everyone thought preseason poll-wise that this is realistically how it would go, that this would be a, a battle of titans. It's proved that way so far in both meetings. So. I think by the time we get to Chicago, I, I think there's going to be a lot of unanswered questions. You talked about the bottom of the Big East is very much settled. The top of the Big East, you, you know where the big guns are. DePaul certainly got a, a lead, although it's not insurmountable. How the Big East standing shake out over the, the this weekend in particular. St. John's wins, then beats Marquette. I mean, you're talking about being in a tie for second. Two on the fast break just couldn't reel it in. <laughs> Here's 11. Pull up. Couldn't hit, gets another try at it. Morris! And she got it, and Grandma <laughs> loves it. <laughs> DePaul and St. John's in a seven-point game here at the half. St. Helens up by three. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gonna We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets. National Girls and Women's in Sports Day was this Wednesday, February 5th. The Big East Conference is proud to celebrate the strong and inspiring women participating and thriving across the sporting landscape. Hear from some of the women's basketball standouts across the conference on their greatest female influence in sports. My greatest female influence in sports would be my older sister. She is a basketball player as well and she plays at the collegiate level and I also was able to always look up to her and admire her as a role model. She's faced a lot of adversity through the sport so just having that connection with her has been really great. Serena Williams, um, she's opened up so many doors for women 
just in how she carries herself and like all the things that she has brought to her game in tennis, and even endorsements and all the commercials and opportunities she's open for women. I think that would have to be Skylar Diggins. Just I love how um, she embodies herself as a woman and how she plays hard and she never steps down to anything. I really enjoy Sydney LaRue from the U.S. Women's National Team. I just actually watched her um, video series on her having a child and coming back from that. So I think just, I like how she has pursued and be a great leader on her team as well as a mother. Natisha Heidemann because just because we knew each other for however many years and seeing her go to the league is just amazing. Allison Felix and Sabrina Williams. Those women are just amazing in the things that they do. They just continue to pave the way for myself and as a basketball player. Athletes such as Maya Moore, Della Don, because I kind of try to mimic their style of play. On, on the court and off the court, they're just great women to look up to. I really hope to be just like them one day and all their success and also give back to the sport that they've played in. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Lyotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by the Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams to break down the state of the league. Big East teams are on the back half of conference play with March implications on the line as we welcome in Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams. Kim, let's start at the top of the league and look at DePaul. The Blue Demons lead the conference at 10-1 and one, and in Monday night's NCAA tournament projections of the top 16 seeds, the DePaul Blue Demons checked in at a 14 seed. What do you make of what the D Blue Demons have done so far this season? Well, I think anything that with DePaul and coach Doug Bruno, the word I always think of is consistency. So once again, DePaul has been consistent. Um, did they have that little slip up against Creighton? Yes, but I honestly think sometimes a loss like that can can help a little bit when you're really rolling along and you're winning games. Um, they had been undefeated in the league before that Creighton loss. So I think that can almost help you recalibrate at time, but they just have so many weapons, obviously all starting with Kelly Campbell, uh, this week's Big East Player of the Week after a, a triple-double. Um, but she's she's orchestrating everything. And then they just have so many scores. Um, Sonia Morris has made a big jump this year. Lexi Held, I think Lexi Held is a potential future Big East Player of the Year. Um, she's got probably the purest stroke, shooting stroke, I, maybe that I've ever seen across any level I've covered, um, WNBA, uh, men's college, women's college. Um, when you see her shoot, it's like, wow, that's a pure stroke. Um, so they just have so many guards. They don't have a ton of size, um, but they the way they play, they don't re really need to rely on any size. Um, the way they can just get up and down the floor, um, really get teams out of their comfort level. Um, once that press comes on and they're forcing turnovers, um, you can get a signature DePaul run where if you're playing them, you might be down two, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're down 12. So again, I think that Creighton loss uh, may may have help them. On the topic of tournament projections and Charlie Cream's latest bracketology, both of those teams were included. There were two of four teams that Charlie Cream has in there, DePaul, Creighton, Marquette, and St. John's. What does that say to the depth of the league this year? Absolutely. I mean, I think it would be great for the league to get four, maybe even five teams in. Um, I like that those four teams are in. I think maybe a fifth could sneak in as well. Um, I think Seton Hall could make some noise. I think they're going to have to do a lot of work for the rest of Big East play. Um, they've been a little bit inconsistent, but but with that, you have those four teams in. So when you're playing against those four teams, that's a big chance to boost your resume with a win. Um, so I think a team like Seton Hall just has to recognize those opportunities that are ahead of them and that it's not just impacting that one game, um, but their chances of getting into March Madness. 
How about a team that's maybe surprised you this season with where they're at right now in the conference standings? I think it's absolutely Marquette. That was a team who is second in the standings and was picked ninth in the preseason poll. Um, and you think about all that they lost, all five starters who had all averaged a thousand points or more. Um, Alizé blocked in 2000 points. So they just, they lost an incredible amount. So to think, and not to mention their head coach, Carolyn Keeger. Um, so to think about the job that coach Duffy has done in her first year is pretty incredible. As we're on the back half of conference play now, Kim, these games are all the more important. And you look at the standings and you've got Two teams at seven and four, St. John's and Seton Hall, and then another tie at six and five, Creighton and Villanova. We're going into a really important weekend this upcoming weekend. What is what do these teams have to do to really get that win and be able to make a break away from these ties? Um, for what I've seen, a lot of these teams need to put together a full 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, teams like St. John's, Seton Hall, who are currently – sitting in fourth and fourth and fifth. This is a huge weekend for them. Um, welcoming in the top two teams, DePaul and Marquette, and it's going to be on their home floor. Um, Seton Hall, I've had them a bunch this year, and you see glimpses of greatness. You see glimpses of, wow, this could be the second best team in the league. This team could beat DePaul, I think. Um, but then there's games where they come out slow. Um, we saw that against St. John's in the all-access game. I saw that the other day against Villanova. They were able to come back in that one. Um, but against a team like DePaul and Marquette, you can't dig yourself into a hole. Joe Tartamella, St. John's, he's actually the opposite. He's talked about the importance of his team closing games. Um, so I think this is a time where you have to lock in on a full 40 minutes. Um, you can't give up. You can't get lazy for three minutes against DePaul or they'll go on a 14-2 run. Kim Adams, everybody, you can catch her at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Friday night as Marquette visits Seton Hall. And then again on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern with Villanova at Butler. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Megan. I'll uh, see you. At Welcome back to Carneseca Arena, everybody. I'm John Fanta, joined by Mike Watts. St. John's, what a half, up 35-28 to 28 on the 14th ranked first place Blue Demons. And as we look at the highlights, I have to offer you some popcorn. Yeah, what would Terrell Owens say? Get your popcorn ready. This, uh, you gave me so much. I have so much. This game is floweth over. I mean, some key blocks. We've seen DePaul out in transition in the early going. Got to a 14-7 lead. That three-pointer keying that beginning run, and then St. John's goes on an incredible 18-4 run of their own. They shoot the three ball at a 35% clip, six in the opening half. You see Hoppy nail four all by herself, and, and both the offensive and the defensive end from St. John's keyed that run, including that vicious block by Kadeja Bailey. She had two in the opening half and then nearly took us out at the scores table. <laughs> and that defense leads right to offense. Bailey, the sophomore, has seven rebounds, three assists, two blocks. St. John's shooting 41% from the field. They hit six three-pointers and rebounds even. 10 assists hey guys, yeah, on 14 field goals. With more, here's Ashley Lyotis. Not exactly pleased with his team in that huddle before the half. He said they have to get back to basics. They have to do the little things and it's all about those second chance shots that they're just not getting a lot of. Now coming out of halftime, I did get a chance to speak with Coach Tartamella. He said he's pleased with their energy. He is happy with their rebounding, and he said Bailey really gave them that lift they needed. But he's expecting a little bit on defense for things to change. They just need to keep doing what they're doing on that side. Mike, John. Deja Church committing the foul. What's the adjustment that if you're Doug Bruno, you're making right here? Find me napkins because <laughs> that, 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 that popcorn had a lot of butter on it. Uh, I think, for one, I, I thought as the quarter progressed, they seemed to level the ship out. I think they handled adversity as well as they had hoped. I, I like them in a man-to-man -man more than a zone, given how well St. John's is shot. I'd like to see... A little bit of pressure on and off. They did it off one or two makes and thought it was big, and then plays like this, you got to convert. Held. That one off. Campbell with the rebound, though. 
People think that was a prop, by the way. That's real popcorn. <laughs> Nothing staged here. Nope. Campbell with the kick out. Church way off on the three. DePaul now three for 13 from beyond the arc. Three on the shot clock. And with one, Church travels. Another big story to this game, Kelly mm -hmm. Campbell, scoreless. Scoreless. But you aren't waiting for her to score 15 points no. for you to win. And, and obviously, you've seen DePaul enough this year to know that. And I think a lot of college basketball fans have seen enough of them to know that. But truth of the matter is you don't expect zero. And maybe you'd expect a few more assists. Only two. So I'm not waiting for her to get a triple-double. That wasn't the expectation today. It would have been cool to see back-to-back -back for the first time in league history. But you do want to see Campbell have a, a greater thumb on the pulse of this offense. That's her eighth rebound there. Making the little plays. Stonewall with a tough jumper. And that sums up where DePaul is right now offensively. This could be argued as their biggest adversity in a point of a game like this, this early in the third quarter this season, because they led Creighton by 20 a week ago, a very uncharacteristic loss by their standards. Right now, they find themselves in a bit of a hole on the road nonetheless. Hoppy, she is red hot tonight, her Three fifth three-pointer. What a bounce back from a bad game against Georgetown. And now Stonewall with the miss, three for 12 from the field for the reigning all Big East second teamer and a top five scorer in this league. And now Hoppy fouled. I think Doug Bruno made a good point coming out of the game against, against Providence and after the Creighton loss in particular. He, he keeps telling his players all year, you're good enough to beat anybody, but you're also good enough to get beaten by anybody. I don't think they've taken St. John's lightly in this game at all. I think it's been the, the scrap, I think, he referred to it to. And Doug Bruno expected. I think right now St. John's with a 10-point lead could really start to pull away. Halston with that inbounds pass off a held and got it back to her. <laughs> and with five on the shot clock, the beautiful give to KB. Alicia KB for St. John's. St. John's with their largest lead, Stonewell off, and will head to the free throw line. I'll say this, when it feels like St. John's is pulling away, I like that DePaul offensively speeds up a little bit, and not haphazardly. Let's get the ball into the middle of the paint to your best scorer, and then go ask her to go one-on-one -on -one from five feet, minimum get to the line. And that pass from Alston is spectacular. I mean, the dribble drive across the, the paint, and then find the camping player on the low post. That's outstanding. Stonewall one for two from the line. This is a DePaul offense that averages 85 points per game. And a foul on the take from Hoppy. And how does Hoppy get the ability to, to roll down the lane that way? It's because KB comes up and sets one of those bone-crushing screens. We've seen a, a handful today where both KB and the defenders seemed almost shell-shocked by the force at which they had, had come together. Adasha Hoppy, Staten Island native. Out of the Patrick School. Kyrie, among others. It was a McDonald's All-American game now the knee in 2017 and has charged St. John's tonight with 19 points in a game that could turn their season up into another gear that could be the one we look back on on Selection Monday. You and I were, were looking at halftime. Joe Tardamel had said, when's the last time we even beat them at home? Speaking about DePaul. Alston short, and Campbell comes out with it. It was 2013 in the season finale. Shanika Smith now on the St. John's bench as an assistant. 
helps secure the win, and that really puts St. John's into the NCAA tournament. But that was Joe Tartamello's first year. You bring back four starters. That is a program that had gone to the NCAA tournament three years in a row going in. That was the win. I mean, even in the game story, it said DePaul's RPI, top 25, major game changer. Number 14 in the seeds right now, DePaul. This win is by far the biggest of the year if St. John's finds a way to do it. Bailey fouled by Dahlman. You know, we talk so much about adversity. There's something adverse about taking every team's best shot all year long. Great point. That is, that is constant adversity. Tag on the arm. Get to the line. Fadesha Bailey may just have only scored her third point of the night, but what she's lacked in scoring, she has made up for in every other category. <laughs> she's done all the hustle for St. John's in this game. The two blocks she had alone should put her in conversation for the honor roll, if not. Because it, it's really, it's not the scoring, though. Four points, eight points, three assists, and a couple of enormous blocks that changed the nature of this game. Dalman with the scoop and score. The ball has been put in by number 42, Tiara And now a turnover. And let's not forget, not only is it adverse getting a team's best shot, St. John's is eight and one at home. It is very difficult to come here and win. Morris short on the three, long rebound for Hoppy. Johnny's up by 13. They trailed by seven early on. DePaul looked right in sync from the tip. First couple of minutes belong to the Blue Demons. Hoppy with the pull up, just off. Back to a matchup zone from DePaul, by the way. Morris inside of Dahlman. A Juco transfer, was an All-American at that level. Kick out, Church, short. Battle for it. It'll stay with the Blue Demons, but they're now three for 15 from three. Yeah, and let's say this by Campbell. Now has 10 rebounds, still has no points. Set the screen that allowed Church to step behind the line and then tips the ball on the ensuing rebound and gets it off a of St. John's player on the baseline. That's a winning play by a winning player. Dalman off the window. You know, once upon a time, she was thinking about St. John's. Out of Sheboygan. Sheboygan, Sheboygan, Sheboygan. A timeout for Joe Tartamella. A Sheboygan, Wisconsin native. Has not been a huge contributor for DePaul scoring wise. Has four points off the bench. And Doug Bruno's found a bit of a spark. We've got an 11 point game suddenly. As St. John's looks to keep their separation in Queens. Back after this on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. Let's go. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! 
This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Uh, Kadeja Bailey for St. John's tonight, Mike Watts, has really established that whole mentality of playing hard, what Joe Tartamella wanted to see. This is amazing. In the open floor, this is where the Pauls at their best. Swat not once, but twice. Not a Karnaseka. Couple big defensive plays, and then here, tips the ball away. Nearly into the stands, Jeter-esque. This is a first ballot Hall of Fame, not unanimous though, level effort from Kadeja Bailey. She has done it all for St. John's. Eight rebounds, three assists, two blocks as well, folks. The sophomores just brought it. It's the kind of level you have to play to take down the best in the Big East in a DePaul program that we told you earlier has been so strong in this league since 2013. 116 wins, just 20 losses. Yeah. Great teams have players like that. Alston, how did she do that? Let me know when you figure it out. That has a ton of contact, and to be able to use her offhand, flip that off the glass, that is difficult sledding. Can DePaul start a rally. Nolan is the only big St. John's has used off the bench. This is the beginning of her fourth minute of game action today. Hoppy will head to the line for a pair. And that's a big concern for Doug Bruno. It was coming into this game, containing the dribble penetration. Yep. And it not only, a, a lot of the three pointers haven't come that way. And another media is coming, but a lot of the threes have come off ball movement on the on the perimeter, but they've been able to score at the basket, and that penetration just as deadly. We've got a timeout. The St. John's Red Storm up 13 on a DePaul squad with 20 wins. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. together, great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Not gonna want to miss this. All right, we gotta be all in, all in. All right, and we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other, and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. because what we are, we are one. Let's break. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get you see the coaches in pink tonight for St. John's and their support staff as well as this is a play for K game in honor of the legend K. Yow. Yeah, one of the OGs at NC State, Basketball Hall of Famer, and the amount of, of, of goodwill, the amount of money, the amount of awareness that has been raised for cancer prevention and research. 
is almost innumerable. I mean, it's incredible what they've done. DePaul wearing some uh, blue on on their jerseys, but also some pink. And Doug Bruno's got his monogram pink shirt. Told us before the game, after 34 years, you got to have the style ready. And he certainly does. You can head to KYAL.com to find out how you can help. The KYAL Cancer Fund will host the fourth annual Celebration One and Walk on February 22nd. coming up. It'll be on the campus of NC State University. Just an absolute legend. And her impact on women's basketball, so, so strong. A winner in every sense of that word. And now her legacy lives on through the KYAL Cancer Fund. There is a point where there's only a handful of coaches, and you're talking one hand, number of fingers worth of coaches that are at KO's resume, at, at, at uh, the level of respect that name garners, Summit, Ariema. A turnover for the Blue Demons, their ninth. That's just so uncharacteristic of them to see them come in air like we just saw off of Morris's hand. This is a rematch of the 2016 Big East title game when St. John's went to Chicago and beat DePaul. They actually got through the Blue Demons in the semifinals before beating Creighton. Mm -hmm. Their first tournament championship since 1988. <laughs> That is a lonely banner up there in 1988 until 2016. This is a big moment in this game in that you see DePaul with a, a mixture of high scores and, and the rest of the team. They just brought in Campbell and Held and those big names, Stonewell, all come in together now. It's time to start pushing. It's time if you're DePaul to, to get going. 33 points through 26 minutes is some kind of aberration compared to their, their normal scoring. DePaul's biggest deficit of Big East play. Campbell short. Gets her own miss off the tip. 12 rebounds now for Campbell and held hits. They needed that. Big time. You just want to get this down into single digits because if you're DePaul, you're willing to bet on yourself scoring 25 points in a quarter and, and turning a 10-point deficit into a win. You're willing to take that bet. Campbell scoreless thus far tonight, and a foul on Emma Nolan trying to guard Dalman down low. And again, that's fine. It is fine that Campbell has not scored yet. DePaul can win a game in which Campbell does not score double figures. I don't know about zero, but she scored in single digits before and it's never been an issue. Stonewall, just off tonight. Shante Stonewall, three for 14 from the field, just eight points for one of the top five scores in the Big East. And Stonewall has scored 10 plus in 17 games in a row. And on eight right now, I'll probably get there again, but it's been a surprisingly inefficient night and there have been some shots that she could just as easily have made that she hasn't. Correa in and out. Campbell probing. Inside to Dolman. Back door, Morris. There's inside out to Paul. And the addition of Dolman off the bench, Doug Bruno calling on the JUCO transfer, and she's given them a spark. It's been a nice touch. Someone who, you know, at Iowa Western and look, different caliber of basketball, no doubt about that, but 71% field goal shooter. Get her inside five feet, you feel all right. Traveling. Is that the fifth travel called on St. John's? Here's the thing. They have 12 turnovers. Half of them have been dead ball turnovers. That is a huge difference. <laughs> Between those live ball ones, which DePaul just feeds off of. And they will kill you if you allow them to off those dead ball situations, or off those live ball, rather, situations where you get a broken floor and, you know, that two and a half versus two kind of, of numerical advantage. 
They're fourth in the nation, these DePaul Blue Demons, with a plus 8.7 turnover margin. Stonewall off the window. That is a terrific play from Doug Bruno. That is Campbell coming across, setting two screens, and now off the make, trying to force St. John's into that press. Alston off with an unbalanced look. And DePaul quite suddenly within nine, with 90 seconds left in this third quarter. Here's Hell, the pull up. A 7-0 Blue Demon surge is now. England will settle things down. It's such a crucial road weekend on the schedule for DePaul and Marquette, the two Metropolitan teams who play at such a high level in terms of their intensity. And the two Midwest teams can say the same. Short for hell. All due respect to everyone else in the Big East, these are my favorite weekends. The Seton Hall St. John's versus the Paul Marquette weekends, these are the best. I mean, the last five years, this has been the, the cream of the crop in the Big East more often than not. Great point. Off that rebound here, St. John's with 12 seconds on the shot clock, a real opportunity for momentum. Alston. Seven on the timer. Off to Correa. The freshman is off. DePaul on the seven-nothing run here. Could make it nine or even ten to close out the quarter. Seven seconds left. Morris, the sophomore. Three seconds left. Morris, the pull-up. That'll do it for quarter number three. Mission accomplished. DePaul back within ten. They feel like offensively they're getting going a little bit. A little bit of a drought for St. John's going into the fourth. The Blue Demons looking to maintain their separation in the top spot in the conference. St. John's trying to get the biggest statement making win on their resume. The fourth quarter is next. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. All right, we got to be all in. All in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. not gonna want to miss this here we do what others don't dream what others won't driven to leap forward determined to always give back here we work where giants have played where the connection of work and ethic is made a diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. Quick look around the Big East heading into this fourth quarter. St. John's up 49-40 on number 14, DePaul. 
Seton Hall leading Marquette 53 to 44. Alexis Lewis, the Iona transfer with 23 points. And Seton Hall six and nine for three to just 0 of six for Marquette. How close did you zoom in to show me the three point field goal differential between Marquette and Seton Hall? My God. Very close. Seven minutes left in Cincinnati. Key game for the standings. Villanova looking to stay in the middle, but right now Xavier's in a one-point game with them. Yeah, and St. John's has to be frustrated to let two overtime games against Nova get away from them, especially the last one last Friday night. Stonewall just off. Dolman could not get it to go. Butler up 18 on Georgetown. Bulldogs looking to go to 8-3. and three. Alston on the run. Wow. Red Star basket put in by number 25, I, I think a fair point by Joe Tartamell in the lead up to this game. We're not intimidated by Florida State when they were undefeated and yep. top 10 in the country. We're not going to be intimidated by DePaul, number 14 in the country. We played him close already. Held foul going to the rim. Well, that's why you challenge yourself in non-conference play, and that's why, as a result of challenging yourself, even though you lost some of those big resume games, your RPI stays at a solid level, and that's why a win like tonight can just catapult you. And your loss to Florida State was by four. <laughs> that wasn't a bad loss. No, not Now, St. John's has some iffy losses. Some where they just feel, and some wins where they kind of thought, man, we should have played better, you know. That, that one was coming for us. Maybe we got away with that one. There have been games where they've been a layup away. I mean, 12 games into this year, I felt they should have been 11 and one, but they weren't. KB was rejected from behind by Held. Stonewall. Off to Held for three. And DePaul just four for 19 from beyond the arc tonight. A team that averages 11 triples per game. Mentioned it earlier, 35%, that's fourth in the Big East. Most field goals attempted from beyond the arc in the Big East, second in the country. This is uncharacteristic, and you give St. John's a, a fair amount of credit. They've got some length in some positions that can bother you a little bit. You know, I, I thought Doug Bruno calling St. John's a redo of that Marquette team with Blockton and the gang. Austin just off of the foul. On Dolman going for that rebound. KB down in some pain. I thought that was a tremendous compliment to St. John's. That he felt that way because they played some of the toughest games in this conference over the last two years. And for KB, someone who's dealt with some, some injuries this year, I mean, that resonated through the rafters, that bang on the floor. And Alston... Just leaving that, that rebound a little too high, and KB certainly the undersized player underneath. Hoppy for three. Her sixth of the night. With Dasha Hoppy for the Red Storm. St. John's leads 15. Talk about one of the breakout performances of a year that seemingly for Quidasha Hoppy has happened time and time again. Kadasha Hoppy with 24 points to match her career high. Campbell off the catch. Kelly Campbell with her first points. Her first points, but 13 boards and does so many things well, playing with three fouls right now, and now trying to get back against Correa. What a move by the freshman. What a move by the freshman indeed, Leilani Correa began this year as one of the most outstanding high scoring bench players in the country as it cooled off. Stonewall is off. This has been a house of horrors for Shante Stonewall tonight. She's four for 19 from the field. And it's frustrating because it, it's, it, it, they've been makeable shots for the most part. I don't, I don't question much if any of her shot selection. And that's sort of the case for a team sometimes. It's. It's just some nights they don't fall. DePaul has had some decent looks from three that they've missed, and Stonewall in particular has missed a couple under the basket. I'm sure she wants back. Maya Stovall back in. Stovall and one. 
The story of the next two minutes and 29 seconds until the under five. Stay within striking distance. Don't let St. John's run this game away from, from DePaul. That is the whole story. Maya Stovall, an ankle injury plaguing her earlier in conference play. Mm -hmm. The sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, just delivered as big of a three-point play as any in this game. It gets it back to single digits. England broke the pressure. Tiana England long. Exactly what Doug Bruno wants to see the press do. Three, four, Morris. That should be worth four. Nearly on the sideline. That was at the bottom of Lou and Lou Carnesecca. Kick out to Bailey from Hoppy. Back to Alston off the fake. She had a good look, but passed it up and turns it over. Can you believe this could be a one possession game in the next 25 seconds? St. John's was up by 16. What a ball game in Queens tonight between two of the best in the Big East. Here's Sobal, the sophomore. Coming in off the bench, hand off to Campbell. Rejection from Bailey. Her block party continues. That's three denials. She's a beast. <laughs> she is a beast. <laughs> On the inbounds, Morris, and it's down to four. All three blocks have been brutal. I mean, have just annihilated the opposition. But DePaul has crept back in. Four point game as St. John's calls a timeout. And we still have 619 on the clock. Buckle your seatbelts on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you can work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 women's basketball team. Not gonna want to miss this. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Arena, and what a display of Big East women's basketball tonight. St. John's was up by 16, but DePaul has come storming back. Four-point affair. The highlights over the last few minutes have been awesome. Bailey swatting it out of play. Ensuing inbound gave DePaul a chance to get it down to four points. Sneaky pass behind England. The lay-in for Sonia Morris. And we are down to a four-point game. It has been, at times, a 16-point St. John's lead. 
Right now, it's the best scoring run of the game for DePaul, plus eight. What does the conclusion of this one come down to in your eyes? <laughs> <sighs> I, I think pace still matters. I think St. John's wants this to be a little slower. You're seeing more press from DePaul. Not only do you have to beat the press, if you get to the rim, you have to finish. And I know this sounds almost lazy. It's been St. John's biggest Achilles heel. When you get to the rim late in the game, you have to score. You can't miss layups. Is St. John's team projected as an 11 seed in the latest ESPN Bracketology. A win tonight will be a huge feather in their cap for that case. Three seconds on the shot clock. Alston with a prayer. Shot and a clock. shot clock violation forced by DePaul. If you say they can't defend, folks, I John. give you this. <laughs> they can defend. And the numbers don't look good because the way they play at times shot. invites it. Yeah. But if you look right now, yeah, St. John's is shooting 40% from the field. DePaul has 14 more field goal attempts. You're willing to live with that. And typically, DePaul is the one shooting 40% from the field. They just haven't tonight. They're about 30. A foul on the floor on KB. You spend time talking to Doug Bruno. That's her fifth foul, by the way. KB. Out. That's a big loss. That means Nolan's got to come in just a freshman. Big spot for Emma Nolan. It also moves a couple players up the line. So now Bailey isn't playing a small five. She's playing the four. Nolan plays the five, and theoretically. And I think that's the right call, the way she swings around her. May have had all ball, but it's tough. Bailey, four blocks now. And now Kadesha Bailey on the break. Lost the basketball. Oh, to make that good of a defensive play, then lose it in transition. That's got to be the fourth or fifth time St. John's has gotten to the rim on a broken floor and haven't been able to convert. Now we've got a whistle and a foul. Offensive foul. Excuse me, defensive foul, but this one's on. Oh, now to clarify, it's on there Stonewall. It Here it is, <laughs> off that screen. We were waiting and waiting. Well, because DePaul didn't move, you're wondering. England off the inbounds, missed it. Bailey can't hit and looks at the rim, Mike. You just brought it up. They got to hit those. Stonewall in transition now. Extra pass, Church. Rebound for Morris. Campbell short. But Stonewall with the board. Stone cold. Now, don't lose your composure if you're St. John's. Nearly did. That almost sailed over Hoppy. The pace for St. John's has gone out of control here all of a sudden. That is two offensive rebounds and a blown layup. Those are the two things Joe Tartamella stressed to us in the lead up to this game. Have to rebound better. Have to scrap for loose balls better. And we have to convert at the rim. Hoppy for three, Kadasha Hoppy with a career high 27. Shooting the lights out tonight, and that was the only way St. John's was going to win this game the way it worked out. They uh, needed that. Unconscious for the junior, and now on that runner, a foul. Stonewall trying to will her way to the rebound. That's seven made threes, that's a career high. 27, of course, a career high. I mean, it's been a special performance for a player who's been at a very high level over the course of this year. <laughs> Almost a quadruple double. Stonewall making the first free throw. And through all that, through seven threes and 27 points from St. John's leading scorer, we are back to a four-point game, and now a three-point game. One possession with four minutes to go. Well, the way that St. John's is going right now, the ball has got to be in Kadasha Hoppy's hands. She is the inbounder here, gets it to Alston. This is it. Yeah, you beat the press. Don't 
force yourself in. That one doesn't go for Hoppy. He's got a good look. Just couldn't hit the jumper. DePaul was down 16. Stonewall, timely. You thought maybe this would be a down night, and she is a winner. She is a competitor late in games. Alston with the answer. That broke up a 14-3 DePaul run. Alston with 16 points. 43 of the 61 for St. John's from Hoppy and Alston. Morris is short. Hoppy with the rebound. Here comes England. Three minutes on the clock. Tiana England. Couldn't hit it, but Bailey got the board. That's her 11. I count 12 to 14 points. St. John's is left on the floor tonight. Six on the timer. Alston stuck. Bailey with three. Bailey. And did get the rim. Stoball with the board. Held the fake. Lexi held for the tie. Hits it home. Three-point goal for the ball. Then by number 10, Lexi held. DePaul, one's oh, down DePaul. 16, has tied this ball game at 61. Incredible. DePaul just went through this the other way a week ago. They were up by 20 and they watched it run away from them. And a little bit of me wondered if they learned something about that, about the ability to come back and if they'd need it. That is stone cold. That is a good pass from Stonewall and a terrific sidestep away from pressure from the side. Put that in. We'll take a quick break. Final 223 after this. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. here in Queens. 2.23 left and that's DePaul Press ready to go. Poppy is not your only scorer. I know it feels that way. Run your offense. <laughs> Poppy, she's got 27. 12 on the shot clock, England. Extra pass to Alston. Now eight on the timer. Alston had her shot altered by Church, but Correa, look what she found. Alston doesn't get a three away from the corner because Campbell comes all the way across the floor after helping on the other end. That forces that ball a little further out, forces deeper into the shot clock. Long rebound, England was stripped by Kelly Campbell. Campbell for the lead, get it! Goal, the ball, the Unreal, unreal. She saves all six of her points for the last five minutes. What a game! Happy! Short on the three. Morris was fouled by Hoppy. I don't mind that. DePaul is in the bonus right now. And I'm okay with the idea of putting DePaul at the line and potentially getting the clock back in your favor the rest of the way. It's only Hoppy's first. First, Correa 
off the block by Church, able to lay it in, give St. John's the lead, but not for long. Campbell from distance. So if you're St. John's, it doesn't matter if it's a two or three, go get your shot. And theoretically, you can have the shot clock in your favor for a two for one down the stretch. Sonia Morris, an 88% free throw shooter, gives DePaul the three point lead. St. John's has two timeouts left. So does DePaul. Almost thought they were going to use one there. I mean, that was a cluster coming out of the backcourt. You don't need a three here. Nope. But now there's only 12 seconds on the shot clock. 10 on the timer for Hoppy. Eight on the timer. She picked up her dribble, which means England has it with five. England with three. England with the runner. Couldn't hit it. Up ahead to Morris, and now you probably have to foul. Four second difference, I don't know that you've got enough time. And they do. If you take that shot five seconds earlier and you get a stop and you advance the ball with a timeout, 10 seconds is a world of time. But four second difference between shot and game clock, not nearly enough. Morris, so clutch. This DePaul team was down 49 to 33. Morris, an 88% free throw shooter. This is a 35 to 14 run, but Morris, <laughs> she commits a violation on herself there. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that in years. It's good, but the ball hasn't touched the rim yet, so you're running in for your own miss, and you didn't miss. And as a result, it's 67-63. That's oh. a big point off the board. Potentially, if you are St. John's, of course, everyone knows the, the single bonus is long gone in women's college basketball. But it is a four-point game. If you get a three, even a two, and foul again, you're willing to live with that outcome. Running. That ball is only halfway down. Gotta trust yourself. Where does St. John's go here? You are looking for an open three in my mind. I'm okay with, with Correa if she gets to the rim quickly, and I'm okay with Alston if she finds an open three, but Hoppy's obvious. England back to Alston. Alston guarded tightly, flips it up, can't hit. Campbell with the rebound and the DePaul Blue Demons once down by 16 on a 34 to 14 run. This is incredible. This is exactly what the St. John's coaching staff was worried about. Giving up offensive boards and moreover not making layups at the end of a game with it all on the line. This is why DePaul over huh. the last six seasons and change, Preach. put up 120 <laughs> Big East wins. Preach. And what, 20 losses, you said? Talked about how rare it is to lose back-to-back, -back, but even losing two out of three for DePaul is so rare. Bailey, they need it. Way off. Rebound Correa, and she's fouled with 10 seconds left. It's surprising to see Kadasha Hoppy not take a three. She's, she's got seven. She's not necessarily the player. You might want to free her up, but she's not going to create a three on her own. So you're asking the offense to create space for her. And I think the poll is large in part done a good job in the final five minutes. A lot of it has been Lexi Held lining up directly across from her and not straying. But she did have probably five, ten feet in front of her in the left-hand corner on the previous play where maybe she could have gotten something off, but that's a big if. Correa yeah. hits both, and a timeout for Doug Bruno, timeout. which allows him to advance the basketball. Each team with one timeout left. And if you're St. John's, the frustration here is you got 27 points out of Hoppy and 16 out of Alston. You held Campbell to one of her worst statistical nights as a scorer through 35 minutes. You only committed 15 turnovers. You shot the lights out from three at certain points in this game. 
And you're probably wondering what more could we have done to have overturned the result that we faced in Chicago in January. And the answer is not, not very much. For St. John's, will host Marquette on Sunday. How big is that game now? Massive. For both. Golden Eagles are about to lose to Seton Hall. And the Pirates, all of a sudden, winners of three in a row, will host this DePaul team. That is going to be a, a showdown. That is going to be a showdown. Think about the standings. Marquette about to go to eight and four. Seton Hall will match them at eight and four. And a foul here. Campbell will go to the line. St. John's about to drop to seven and five. And why does that matter? Creighton has the night off. They play Providence tomorrow. Villanova was in a tight game with Xavier and won 55-54. Wow. So by doing that, you've got St. John's at seven and five with Villanova who swept St. John's and owns the tiebreaker. Yep. You did not want to be a seven seed. Nope. How incredible is that for a, a team that went to OT twice with Nova, played DePaul to the wire twice. This is going to be their fifth Big East loss. And they're going to feel like four, if not five of them were heartbreakers. And that is devastating. So a timeout for St. John's here to advance the ball. That's their final timeout. Yep. After the game, Ashley Lyotis, our sideline reporter, will talk with the winning team. In all likelihood, Shante Stonewall will be joining us. House of Horrors no more, John. No. I mean, 16 points for Stonewall, 6 to 21 from the field. What did you make of her, though, in the fourth quarter? Yeah, it, it, there were some missed lay-ins in the opening three quarters. It was not her best performance, but when the team needed her, she did a wonderful job. She, there was a, a couple of passes along the way that I think probably are going to get swept under the rug. Only had two assists, but one of them in the fourth quarter providing a game-tying three, about four minutes to go that changed the tenor of this game and her ability to finish near the restricted area down the stretch gave DePaul precisely what they needed to overturn a 16-point deficit. It's players like Campbell and Stonewall, younger players like Held and Morris. They just don't ever think they're out of a game, and why should they ever believe that? Correa, the rebound for Church. The DePaul Blue Demons come back from 16 down to claim their 11th Big East win. What a rally. DePaul averages 86 points a game. We talked about it at the outset. If you hold them 10 under, you feel great about how your defense played. DePaul was sitting under 30 points early in the third quarter. But they spout off down the stretch and come away with one of the bigger wins on the road that the Big East has to offer. The DePaul Blue Demons just showed us why they have 13 straight 20 win seasons and why they're on their way to an 18th straight NCAA tournament appearance, which is something that not many can say in women's college basketball. We will take a break. DePaul, the 14th ranked team in the country. A winner here in Queens. Back after this. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Hey guys, what a thriller in Queens tonight. I'm joined by 
by Sean Payton Hall. First of all, congratulations. You really helped this team come alive in the fourth quarter. Was anything said by a teammate or coach or changed up at the half whenever you guys decided on any changes? Um, definitely. Um, of course, our teammates had our backs. Um, we knew that we were down by quite a bit, and we just had to uh, look, buckle down on defense. Um, you know, we're missing, uh, even myself is missing quite a few, quite a few shots around the basket, so they were like, settle down, um, start with our defense, have our defense, lead to a better offense. And what is it about this team? Maybe something that we don't see from the outside, but it allows you to have that fight and to be able to finish games like this one tonight. Yeah, I think it goes back to um, our experience, um, you know, just coming from our seniors, but also rubbing off on our underclassmen. They really trust what we're doing. We definitely trust Bruno. Um, you know, he, you know, he kind of got nervous and more, it was like, you guys are being out-competed, out combated. So we definitely took that personally because that's something we don't want to do. Um, so I'm happy our team could come out with a victory and actually step up in the fourth quarter. And I know you guys are going to relish in this one tonight, but of course you're in town through Sunday taking on Seton Hall. How important is it to come away on, from this New York swing with a sweep, winning both of these games? How important is that for you guys? Oh, it's very important. Um, the Big East is a, is a dog fight um, every night. So especially on the road, you know, our five, five out of our last um, seven games are on the road, so it's super important for us to think. Very important for us to take care of business on the road. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thanks, Sean. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. A big win for you guys here tonight. We'll see how this one plays out on Sunday as you head over to the other side in New Jersey. Mike, John, let's send it back to you. Actually, great job here tonight. This DePaul team outscoring St. John's 31 to 16 in the fourth quarter. Mike Watts, a final thought. You know, I think Shante Stonewall put it just right. They missed too many easy layups over the course of this basketball game. There are a lot of ways in which the ball could have made this easier on themselves. And, you know, for St. John's, they left 15 points, give or take, at the cup over the course of this game. And they are going to rue that. But you and I talked about during the break, Doug Bruno and DePaul, if they face St. John's a third time, it is exceedingly difficult to win three times, no matter where you're playing. So the conference tournament may give us uh, one more look at this this year. DePaul improves to 11-1 and in Big East play, 21-3. and Overall, this, a gutsy road win against the St. John's team that's already projected in the NCAA tournament field. The Johnnies now in need of a bounce-back victory. They'll welcome in a hungry Marquette team as well on Sunday. For Ashley Lyotis, Mr. Watts, always a pleasure. My man. And K.J. Hammond. This is John Fanta saying so long from Queens. The DePaul Blue Demons, the reigning Big East champions, flex their muscles in a 16-point comeback victory. 71-65, DePaul a winner. Thanks for watching Big East Women's Basketball. Enjoy your weekend.